All right, well, I've been sitting in a blue tunnel for about 30 seconds. This is the second time I've tried to get out of the instance my fleet carrier is in, in a, a bug that was ostensibly addressed a long time ago, and, well, it wasn't, or at least it's rare. I mean, to FDev's credit, this is the first time it's happened since the, the last patch. And I can appreciate the, the gameplay sessions I do in Elite where everything works right, but and there is a lot of stuff like this in this game. It's just exhausting, and that's the only word I really have for it right now. I don't, I don't like to whinge, but you, know, you get two orange sidewinder errors in ten minutes. It really steals your thunder. Try this again here. I was thinking about capturing some stock footage for some other weapon tests I want to do. But I'm not sure that's going to happen. Let's see if we can give this another try here. I thought I'd take my... Uh, turn and burn eagle out I've been working on for a while trying to figure out effective tactics for small ships try to play around with some non-meta ideas to make these ships more fun in high intensity situations but anyway on top topic I have a rule with Elite Dangerous that it's three strikes you're out if I have three major game errors trying to do normal things, then I just call it a night. And I've I've learned that that's you just basically got to take your stuff in stride. <clears throat> anyway, I feel like I'm getting a little sad and depressed, but I'm I'm not. I I have a lot of respect for what this game is and what it tries to do. I'm just frustrated that um, that this issue among other issues are being kicked to the curb, or at least not being talked about right now in favor of Odyssey, which part of me hopes is, is going to address these, but the other part of me thinks it's going to go off like the Fleet Carriers update, where some of the stuff kind of works day one, and everything else is borked, and you just got to bear with it for another month or so while all the kinks get worked out, and some of the kinks just never seem to get worked out. I mean, Thargoid Combat's been in the game for a couple of years now, and we still have Invincible Heart Bugs that completely ruin gameplay sessions in a wing, and other bugs and issues that that plague that particular gameplay loop that make it so that I've legit been told by people in AXI that, that they would rather play by themselves to avoid networking issues. And, and that just... flipping A, that just kills... The community. And then there's the weapon balance issue that promotes poison in PvP situations. The other night I had to clean up a, a raid on our Discord server because one of the other guys on the server got killed, and the guy who killed him decided to post a troll video and spam PvP chat, and it was really, it's really frustrating. It's part of why I don't engage with PvP all that much anymore. It's, it's not that I can't do it or that I don't enjoy the encounters. It's that I run into people in that community that just make me not want to play this game. Which is why I end up playing in solo. Because it's easier just to play by myself than it is to try to play with other people. Than it is to risk encounters in open play where the objective is not to have fun. It's just to dump on people who are not as good as you are. Anyway, that's my strike three. The only PvP I ever do anymore now is curated. It's people who want to fight and we just kind of agree on a place to meet and I'll go do that. But I just don't play an open. And actually, that, that might be a good good topic as to why I don't play an open. About that for a minute. Because the game tries to get you to play in a wing. 
but it's balanced like a single player game with these massive exploity build archetypes that are just so good that they're not beatable inside the paradigm. However, good PvP in any video game offers you multiple viable options that don't feel overly advantageous and then the meta will favor whatever one seems to be the most effective across the, the broadest number of possible encounters in a, in a particular type of gameplay. Destiny has this where what is a mountaintop recluse is still even now one of the most popular weapon archetypes and it's been one of the most popular combinations that you can use in Destiny for well, since both weapons became available it's been a couple of years now. Mountaintop and Recluse are both hopefully going to go away with weapon sunsetting, at least in Trials, which you know, might help make it a little bit less, feel a little bit less likely dangerous, actually, with the Fertilands. But there's a lot more going on under the surface than I think people are willing to talk about, and there's a lot of intersecting small issues that all need attention collectively in order to be able to improve the way the game works. One of the big ones is netcode, as you seen tonight. Another one of the big ones is collaborative tools, which of course don't really mean anything if the netcode's too crap to be able to give you a solid experience, but I'll give you a good example here. Now, this is progress in a positive direction. Let me see, where'd that CQC... It was an option here. I actually haven't used it so I've flipping forgot where it's at in the interface that lets you queue for the CQC while you're on the carrier. Did they pull that? Or did I just completely space its place in the interface? There it is. Yeah, so I, I can queue for CQC right here. And if a game comes up available, then I can just jump right in. And I like that because carriers, fleet carriers introduce a lot of wait time and don't really give you very much in the open game world that you can do with that wait time. You basically just have to fart around your carrier's hangar bay, maybe play with your outfitting, maybe you know, check the commodities market or the shop. Though in my experience, the overwhelming majority of fleet carriers in the game don't really have anything good in the store that you can depend on unless you happen to be surfing in Nara and to know that it's got what you're looking for before you land. My fleet carrier, for example, I, because of storage space limitations, I, I tend to use my carrier more for trading because there's so many fleet carriers that there's not really a reason for me to run anything in in the ship store. Like it, it's so pointless that about the only thing I do is run mining tools. So go in here, um, do, 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 grab shop. It's just mining tools. It doesn't even give you that main tab. It just bounces you right in here because if you go into optionals and say, okay, um, Brow shop. And I got PV hangers and surface scanners. Basically, mining stuff. So that I don't have to have mining stuff in my outfitting screen. Because, you know, one of my LTDs, I want to just be able to slap some cargo racks and other stuff in there and go. The collaboration tools are one of the big weaknesses that Elite Dangerous has right now. CQC, Q for matchmaking, is great. Now, let me have good rewards in CQC that actually incentivize me playing the game. Because what, 5,000 credits a match is is piss money. I could make 5,000, I could make 50 times that in the same amount of time that a CQC match asks you to commit to. And without even an engineered ship, just a Type 7 full of cargo racks and the right trade route. And you can just bounce back and forth and make way more money. And, and at this point, the guys who play, this is personal experience, because I do, see, I have done CQC in the past. I'm not all that far up in it. Primarily because the core CQC guys in this game are absolutely insane. Like, And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean they're so good that I die so fast that I don't, I don't learn anything from it. And there's nobody in that queue that's at my level. So when I go in here, I'm basically playing against Herculean masters of the game's mechanics. And, and it's not fun. I mean, going in there and just losing five matches in a row is not fun. And at some point, 
it pissed me off so bad that it wasn't worth trying to continue to, to grind it out because I wasn't learning anything and some nights I'd sit for 20 minutes in the queue and there just wouldn't be anyone there so yeah what the game needs now is a way for me to find other people who are doing the activity that I'm doing right now they, they have that kind of for multi crew which was right here. I guess they moved that too. Yeah, because no one was using multi crew. So that that's kind of a bummer because multi crew had a lot of potential. And the reason why nobody wanted to engage with it was because it was always more credit efficient to just get your own ship and to do the things you were doing in the multi crew session. And, and flying someone ship launch fighter is a lot of fun. I mean, it's cool. It's just that nobody really does it anymore because you can make more money in an eagle just tagging ships in a high res. You don't have to go to a has res to make more money than your SLF will provide, especially as a new player, because the game doesn't let me, as the resource owner, pay my friends. It gimps the mechanic because, for, I guess, for balance reasons. So that if you're, for example, a harmless player in a combat ship launch fighter and you drop into my combat anaconda or corvette and go kill stuff, you'll make, what, like 10 or 20% of what I make? And, and since combat only pays 12 million an hour, that means in a one hour gameplay session, you might walk away with 1.5 or 2 mil. When you could slap together the, the cheesiest garbage vulture, no, not vulture, um, eagle or sidewinder and just follow me around in my big ship tagging the targets that I tag and get the entire value of the session. All 12 million credits. So why why engage with multi-crew at all? I mean, what's the point? And this is, and this is my point. They created a really cool mechanic and then completely disincentivized people from ever using it by making everything else you can do in the game in person pay more. So if if you don't want people in multi-crew, then what we need is a way for me to queue for matchmaking with a group of people and be able to find a group of people in the game who are, for example, trading and need an escort. Like, help me find people who are doing that right now. Because I've got an entire laundry list of... Pull this up here. I've got an entire laundry list of... Actually, Avorian got in there somehow. I'm not sure why of Discord servers that are dedicated to Elite Dangerous. And there are a bunch of nights where I get on, and there's not all that much going on. Like You go in here, and you've got, like, what? You've got two people in Gnosis, no, three, two people in Gnosis who are probably just shooting crap, and they're not, like, actually doing combat because it's Gnosis. You've got um, these two guys in AXI. I just talked to them a little while ago. They seem like relatively cool dudes. But as you can see, one guy's deafened because he's trying to kill a Thargoid with AX multi cannons, and the other guy's muted. And I didn't actually ask him why he's muted. And I ended up dropping out because they're doing their thing, and, and I'm not in a position to participate. Nor do they particularly want me to participate because this guy wants to get his solo kill. So I'm kind of off on my own there. Elite Week is relatively active. It looks like they've got a couple of guys doing the turning the wheel activity. Which is cool. I actually, that's a that's a great project. I'll probably go and join them here in a minute. But if I were out there trying to do trading, I would like to be able to find other people who are doing the same thing in game without needing to lean on Discord. Because even with all these servers, you you only got a limited glimpse into the total active player base. Because only a small amount of players actually engage with Discord. <clears throat> so, where does that leave a guy like me? Well, just kind of SOL. I mean, I've got no effective way in-game to find the kinds of people who are doing the things I want to do. And it's not just trading. Let's say I wanted to go fight in a has res. Well, I've got, I've got no way to find people who are fighting in a high res or in a has res or who are hunting for particular types of assassination marks and missions. I've got no way to coordinate with the active community, no way to meet new people. And this is the kind of stuff like, that would drag me out into open play. I would play open play with a good wing. 
Especially if it was like wing trade, because then that gives you a legitimate reason to have an escort, because the, the NPCs in this game are just, they're just not a threat in, in a trade ship that's reasonably built. You'll always be able to either escape or beat them in a fight. But in open play, where you could potentially be pirated by another commander, man, if you're running any kind of cargo or mining build, you've got no chance of beating them on your own. And that's where that risk-reward thing comes in. And that's where hiring an escort would be an incredibly valuable thing. I wish that FDev would leave the value, for example, of LTDs alone and say, okay, if you're willing to take the risk of getting blown up and open, you deserve all 250 million credits of whatever that's worth. But the real incentive is to take that 250 mil and say, okay, I need an escort. I will pay 50 million credits for a good escort to take me from this system to this system so I can drop off my cargo. And you don't even need to have that escort follow you around while you're mining. You can just say, okay, I'm done mining. I need somebody to meet me in the rings and escort me from this point in the rings to the station. And for those 15 minutes or however long of gameplay it is to get this LTD load to wherever it needs to be in order to be effective, even with a fleet carrier, I need somebody to get me safely to the station. Who's willing to do that? Let me post something in a matchmaking queue just like there is on this screen and let me go camp. Let me make the connections. Let me decide what that player's time is worth. Let that player decide what their time is worth. Let us come to a mutual agreement the way that a capitalist system is supposed to work and let them do their job. Don't worry about players boosting other players. I frankly don't care about player boosting in Elite Dangerous. This game is hard enough. And if I spend hours grinding up credits and I decide that I want to give them to another player, there should be no barriers to me deciding to so because it's my time it's my energy it's the assets that i have earned through the mechanics the developers have set up let me just go let me have this and here, here's the other thing too um wing jump coordination in this game sucks if if you have to do a multi-jump route to run diamonds from one system to another and let's say you don't have a fleet carrier or you don't want to wait for your fleet carrier to spool up and make the jump and you need to do a three-jump cycle to get from whatever system you're mining to whatever system you're selling. The current tools in-game for coordinating wing jumps are so bad that everybody's got workarounds. Navlock in this game is absolutely terrible. It doesn't, it doesn't work the way it's supposed to work. So it rarely gets used. In the few cases where I've seen it used, it's to cheese the deceleration time, uh, time mechanic on Super Cruise. You'll have one guy parked at a station, at a buy station, one guy parked at a sell station, and one guy just running the middle route. The two other guys are basically just AFK and scooping up wing trade dividends, while the one guy who's actually doing the work bounces back and forth using nav lock in order to stop from having to slow down as he approaches the station. I don't, I don't, I don't like that. I think it sucks. I think it's lame. But the way that you fix Navlock is, is by being willing to give players at least a nominal autopilot and say, okay, if I Navlock to this guy, he's my wing leader, have my ship close in, get in formation with the wing leader, and when he spools his frame shift drive, start mine at the same time. We all jump together, we all navigate together, where the wing leader is controlling the ships that are linked to him in Super Cruise. And I, as the pilot of one of the following ships, have the ability to unlink at will whenever I want to. But while we're linked together, treat us like a single entity in Super Cruise. And if we get interdicted, let everybody who's in the wing participate in the interdiction. Like we're all sharing whatever the hyperspace field is that our drives produce. And, and make it so that the guys who are attacking us, like it's hard for them to start the fight unless they're on our level. Because the, the way that the interdictions work in this game, I actually disagree with, too. I think that it, it's slanted way too far in favor of the attacker. Because a, a dude in a sidewinder can interdict, can interdict somebody in a Type 10, in one of the heaviest chips in the game. And, and the Type 10 can lose to the sidewinder. The sidewinder has the attacking advantage. And that just blows my mind that, that the developers thought that was a good idea, because... It, it, in normal practical considerations, a sidewinder is not going to beat a Type 10. So why is the sidewinder allowed to even start the fight? To start a fight, you can't win. I, I want Super Cruise mechanics in this game to be mass-based, where the heavier, the 
bigger something is, the harder it is to influence. If you want to rip a Type 10 out, you should at least bring something like a Fertilance in. You should just make it blanket impossible for a Type 10 to be pulled out by a single little ship. Because that, that, that just introduces mechanics for abuse. You should make it so that trying to pull something like a Type 10 out is naturally hot. So the defender has the advantage. And that means if you want to take the, the, the ship, if you want to pirate a Type 10 that's running, for example, combat trading, then you need to get some friends together and you need to go after that big target as a group. The Type 10 is the more expensive ship, should totally have an advantage in confrontation against smaller ships. And you make up that difference by bringing a bunch of smaller ships and using numbers to overwhelm the target because that's legit how you kill big ships with small ships, even in, in modern naval strategy. But, but that doesn't, that's just not how it works. So I honestly think that, that if you want to pull a Type 10 with something like an Eagle, you've got to get two or three of your friends together, and you've all got to tether the target together. Like you all have to be involved in ripping that ship out. That would be so much more engaging. Because that would, that would then put everybody in the formation on the spot to be able to carry their weight. And that means that, that if you know someone in your wing is bad at interdictions, then you've got to take time to address that issue plan around it because if you know you're not going to win an interdiction it's going to change how people set, set their builds up and it encourages ships to specialize which is another important aspect because if you're flying in a wing with small ships having everybody run just the same build it, it's a bad idea you want to have a ship that's dedicated to, to killing shields and a ship that's dedicated to sub-targeting modules and then you, if you're trying to take on something like a type 10 you're probably going to want a dedicated cargo ship to carry the haul because those little ships if you're rating something like a type 10 probably aren't going to have enough cargo space to make the trek worth it and that means then even if you're a pirate you need a dedicated cargo carrier ship that's got the hatch breaker limpets and all of the space and the jump range and all the different things it needs and then once you complete a pirate raid that cargo ship needs to be protected by the pirates. So now you've got cargo running an escort with the added complexity of finding a black market to sell to. And that might mean jumping to an anarchy system. And, and there's multiple layers of emergent gameplay that can emerge from improving these base mechanics. Because as it stands right now, if I try to go out and find an escort for a mission or try to, to find somebody to wing up with, I actually get told, like, what's the point? Uh, a while back, I tried to organize an activity where I was going to go mining, and in exchange for the other player's time, I was going to give them a cut of my cargo um, outside of the station. Like when we got where we were going, we were going to park outside the no-fire zone, and I was going to give them 20 or 30 tons of my cargo. And the, the first thing that they said was like, what, what, wait, why would I do that? What's the point? You, you, want, to, you want us to hunt diamonds with you? Why, why wouldn't we just do that in solo with our own big ships? Like, why, why even bother doing that? You're asking us to make less money and spend the same amount of time and do more effort. I would rather get the credit grind over with. And, and part of that is because of the way um, the interdiction system actually works in this game. And because the block button is fundamentally broken, too. And that's another thing that needs to be fixed. I've watched people on YouTube abuse the block button to split up wings that they want to gank so that they only ever have to fight one or two people at a time in a 1v4. And that you wonder why I don't engage with open play? I, I mean, if someone really wants to kill you, it doesn't matter. This is just, it doesn't matter. There's nothing you can do about it. I mean, the only recourse you have if you get interdicted by a superior force is submit and high wake. And when you get to the next system, if you know they're going to chase you, switch instances. And if you're on someone's if you're on someone's kill list, that's like that's all you got, and that's boring. I don't like that. That's why I don't bother anymore because I, I view playing in open play now as just the most inefficient way to do something. It's not fun unless you're specifically trolling for a fight, which is where that curated PvP thing comes in. I don't mind a curated PvP fight. I enjoy curated PvP because it, you can. You can kill the, the cheese stuff, the, the guerrilla warfare stuff people like to do in open. You don't have to worry about somebody abusing the block button when you do a curated fight. You don't have to worry about people taking all of the other bullcrap that can happen in multiplayer.
So there, there's my event. There's something that I hope that, that the, uh, the developers deal with in Odyssey. That they're talking about this this Odyssey thing potentially being a, a, a massive refresh of ED's code base, and I really hope that that's the case because Star Citizen's going to kick this game's ass if they don't get it fixed. The, the new players that are getting attracted because of the Fleet Carriers update, the, the refresh, man, the momentum is fading. I can feel it. And a lot of the veteran players are just not optimistic that this is going to work out at all. Like Kaizen and his crew are like, yeah, we hope this is good, but he, they're all kind of even, even saying like, yeah, you know, it's probably going to be a rough start. And, and I, I appreciate the technology of this game. I really do. I, I've got a couple of thousand hours built up in this game, and I would really hate to, to get pushed away because Odyssey doesn't end up being what everybody wants it to be. I want this game to succeed. I just wish that whatever's going on in Frontier Developments that, that's making this kind of run jankily, I, I want it to, to be talked about. I want it to be addressed so that we know what's going on. The big thing I want to know is, is like, why are, are things the community's asking for that, that aren't that ridiculous? Like even the simple stuff, like, like the bookmark folder that, that everyone's been clamoring for for three and a half years now? For the galaxy map, like why why isn't that happening? Because I've heard I think two different community managers talk about, no, oh, that's a good idea. I'll bring it up with the devs, and then we never hear about it again. It just disappears into this memory hole, and everybody kind of forgets about it for a while until it gets brought up again some months later. I I would like for the community managers to to just, and it doesn't have to be a complicated explanation. Just say like, okay, our our dev cycle is so compressed that it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen until Odyssey. And if they would say that, I would accept it. Because then I would know what the priorities are. And the same thing with some of the stuff that gets put on the suggestion board in the forum. Like, It would be cool if we could have a live stream where they just go through the suggestions board, maybe curate some of the big like the suggestions that the community is really excited about, or even just the discussions board, some of the, the ideas people toss around in there, and just say, this is a cool idea. We want to do this, but it will be a while. This isn't going to happen. This isn't going to happen. This isn't possible. We wish that it was. This is plausible. We'll address it later. And just go down the list and, and give us some ideas of the kinds of things that the developers are thinking about. So the community knows what feedback AppDev is looking for. Because when I get on the forums, and I've written a couple of essays on the forums about stuff that I would like to see, and a lot of the stuff that I talk about here, it's stuff that I've specifically written articles about on the forum. I, I don't get any... I, I get people from the community to engage with this stuff, but I don't get any response. I have zero idea if anything that I've written on the forums has been looked at by anyone at FDEV. And those are the people that I really want to, to to see these articles. I would like to just know that they've been looked at. I don't even need to have a specific answer. Just, I don't know, give me a little symbol up in the top corner of the screen when somebody from the dev team or the community team looks at one of these articles so that I know that it's at least been seen that it's had its couple of seconds in the sunlight and, and that someone's at least maybe skimmed the first two or three sentences and seen the title and that I mean that would be a start that would be fun I, I would feel more willing to engage with the forms where right now like I, I don't I don't see any point in engaging with the system at all I mean if I knew that somebody at FDev was going to see what I was posting and, and that I would have some type of confirmation that, that, yes, we saw your idea, and good on you. Then, then I would, I mean, how? I would be willing to put spreadsheets together and, and spell out exactly what I think should change in the weapon mechanics system. Because I, I, there are entire weapons in this game that get ignored because they're crap. And the community has openly talked about how crap that they are. Yamix has done an entire video series about it. The, Nothing's changed. I mean, come on, torpedoes? Those are a meme at this point. Nobody uses them. I've built ships centered around torpedoes and thrown grade 5 engineering materials at them and absolutely flipping hated what came out the other end because there was just no way to make them work. And that, you know, it's 
a bummer because somebody put a lot of effort into that weapon model. Somebody did a lot of thinking about how they wanted it to be used, and 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 it's just not being used. Same thing with mine launchers. I mean, mine launchers used to used to be able to dive bomb people with those, and then they added that stupid arming time mechanic to it, and now you can't even do that. So it, <clears throat> mines are gone, torps are gone, turrets are gone. I have an entire rant about that on the Type 10. And turrets are another are another tremendous missed opportunity. Turrets would be a great way to introduce and get people to do multi-crew. But the damage is so gimped that nobody wants to use them. So most multi-crew ships don't even bother with them. Right? Oh yeah, we're coming up on a half an hour. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it a night. Thanks for your time, guys, if, if you do make it to the end. And uh, I guess I'll talk to you all later.